Os, welcome back to The Singing Samurai. Today's video deals with the fascia, the maintenance of the fascia, as well as the healing of the fascia, and how this connective tissue in our body is integral to a singer's success. Okay, so what is the fascia? Let's define that really quick and then I'll talk about how I actually came across this in my research and, and how Aikido is uniquely primed to help us deal with the fascia. So what is the fascia? The fascia is a thin casing of connective tissue that surrounds and holds every organ, blood vessel, bone, nerve fiber, and muscle in place. The tissue does more than provide internal structure. Fascia also has nerves that make it almost as sensitive as skin. That's from Johns Hopkins University. So that's cool and interesting and what? What's the fascia? So another way of looking at it is it's like, um, you know, if you've, if you've ever cooked chicken breast and you're kind of pulling apart the meat and you've got that thin, uh, stringy white stuff that's in between the muscles, that's, that's the fascia. Uh, fascia, as the uh, little snippet said, surrounds just about every single aspect of our body, um, bones, blood vessels, organs, muscle tissue, what have you has nerve endings that are as sensitive or sometimes more sensitive than our skin. Um, and it's not just the fact that the fascia exists, but that there's a system of it from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. So I came across the fascia when I had uh, two different abdominal surgeries a couple of years ago. One was for uh, um, uh, my appendix. My appendix was about to burst. And the other was uh, for a double inguinal hernia that was discovered in the append uh, appendectomy uh, by my surgeon. I said, hey, this is not an issue now, but it's going to become an issue. And so I had two uh, you know, minimally invasive abdominal surgeries a uh, month apart from each other. After those surgeries, and I waited the, the, the amount of time that was suggested by my surgeon to begin singing again, uh, just to make sure that all the tissue had really healed up, uh, I noticed that I was having a really hard time accessing high notes. I noticed that I had a lot more strength in one sense and stamina in my body, but, but not my voice. And I didn't quite understand what was going on because I'd never experienced this problem before. And in fact, I ended up going to an otolaryngologist and they said that I was developing uh, what looked like the precursor to a nodule on my right cord, I think. Yeah, my right cord, which freaked me out, would freak any singer out. And uh, through uh, the vocal therapy that they provided, which took about a month, I was fine. Everything went back to normal. But one of the things that I discovered when I went to my surgeon to say, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having a problem. Um, and I also felt like kind of like a burning sensation in, in the lower area, my lowest uh, area, where I had the, the, the hernia repair. Um, and I didn't, I couldn't get as deep of a breath as I had was able to get before and there was something that was just really stopping me and it didn't feel like the muscles and I didn't know what it was. So he uh, referred me to a physical therapist who uh, deals with the pelvis more than anything else and uh, she is a myofascial release specialist and her name is Deb McKenzie and she's been working for 30 plus years in this field and Deb explained to me what the fascia was and that sometimes in surgery, oftentimes in surgery, when you cut through that fascial membrane and then you put everything back together, instead of it being very smooth, it kind of gums up and it gets all mangled up. And like if you had a, a, a knit sweater and you have like a, a snag down here, it can cause tension all the way up into the shoulder. So maybe a problem down here is going to cause a problem up here. Um, and there are a lot of different techniques that you can implement at home, stretches you can implement at home, but there were also very uh, focused techniques that she did to me, which hurt very badly. <laughs> But then uh, I was able to get form and function back and, and in short order. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. But the thing that, that shocked me was that in, in Deb's book, there's this anatomy book. Um, I'll, I'll link the, the description or maybe I'll put a picture up there if I can find it. It deals with the systems of fascia. In the book, on a page in the book, it was talking about different forms of exercise that you can do to help heal and maintain the fascia in, in a healthy way. And one of them was Aikido. 
I couldn't believe it. I saw a picture of one guy throwing another guy and they're wearing Hakaman. So I was like, well, I know that's Aikido. There's no other uh, martial art that I've seen um, at least to date that wears the Hakama except for Aikido. And so I was like, hey, is that, that Aikido? And she said, yeah, it is. I thought you would appreciate knowing this. And she actually prescribed to me to continue training in Aikido to help deal with my fascial issue. Uh, through training in Yoshokai Aikido, I was able to uh, continue to stretch out the fascia that had gotten kind of gummed up with the help of Deb doing some individual techniques. And she also gave me some focused uh, PT exercises to do as well. But uh, the bulk of my, my work to get the fascia healed was training in Aikido. So I asked Deb, I said, well, if, if someone trained in Aikido consistently, you know, would this, would this help them to deal with, or why would this, and why would this help them to, to maintain their fascia? And she said that, you know, fascial adhesion, which is what I was dealing with, can manifest in a couple of different ways. Typically speaking, fascial adhesion comes from uh, a lot of repetitive movement of a muscle group without any, any relief from that. And especially, um, you, you know, if you're not a very active person. So just being more active in general, you're going to be able to have proper maintenance and healing of your fascia if there's any damage. But also if you uh, do the same thing over and over again with one area of your body that that can cause the fascial tissue to get to get gummed up and to cause adhesion. Because Yoshokai Aikido does these movements that are very extended and open um, and there's a lot of kind of natural resistance by just keeping the form as it is, uh, that helps to keep the fascial tissue stretched out. Uh, you want your fascia to be flexible and slippery so that the muscles and the organs can slide uh, past each other in the body without causing any problems. And if there's adhesion, then that makes it harder and then there's friction and there's there's usually pain associated with that because um, things are getting irritated. Um, but also the, the nature of uke being stretched and, and appropriately, you know, kind of contorted in certain positions, not in a way that's going to cause uh, injury because we take great care with our partner, but it's just going to kind of stretch out those areas of our body that maybe wouldn't normally get stretched out because we're going to find ourselves in a position that we're not normally in. Our body is our instrument. And so if we ignore a fundamental aspect of our physiology, like the fascia, uh, it'd be like uh, ignoring a broken rib. Like, why would you do that? It would be really hard to sing with a broken rib. Um, it'd be really hard to sing with fascial adhesion. It was hard for me. I developed, uh, almost possibly developed a, a nodule even though I have great technique. I've never had an issue in, in all the years that I've been singing until that point. And the worst part was I couldn't actually feel the problem. I didn't know that that was what the issue was until I went to see Deb and, and had things checked out. So there you have it. Studying Yosho Kaikido helps uh, heal and maintain the fascia, the system, uh, membranes that wrap uh, every inch of our body from head to toe. So let's just review. We've got uh, uh, last video, rough and tumble play, uh, the video before that, the reward system of the brain, and then before that, the vestibular system and how properly stimulating the vestibular system is really important. The reward system gets us you know, addicted to singing. The vestibular system helps us to stimulate the area of our brain that we use the most to build technique. And, you know, rough and tumble play, emotional regulation, and the cognitive benefits that are also related to that. And now the system of fascia and how ma the maintenance of that or also the, the ability to repair that uh, can be integral to a singer's success and especially avoiding vocal damage. All right. If you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much. Oh,